Welcome everyone to uh, this week's broadcast of Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. And today we have a special guest interviewer, Camilla Bixler, who is also a uh, co-founder of our parent organization, Ascend. But before we begin with our guest, world-renowned uh, composer and pianist, Stephen Protzman, I'd like to ask Will, what's with your shirt today? I'm glad you asked, Keith. My first shirt of 2022 is my 49ers shirt. Um, the 49ers see the 49ers have been playing a great season. Have been playing a great season. I, I'm I've been cheering them on and watching their games. And I'm and I'm hoping and I hope they make it to, back to the Super Bowl this year. Thank you very much, Will. Well, without further ado, uh, Camilla, would you like to uh, introduce and speak with our guest? Yeah. So it's a great honor to have Steve here with us today and uh, to introduce him to those of you who um, don't know him. So Steve has been called one of the most innovative musicians of his time. He's an artist who can move easily from the classical world to jazz, to world music, and performing as a pianist and working as a composer and a conductor. And he has collaborated with leading artists around the world, everyone from the Royal Scottish <laughs> National Orchestra to um, the Kronos Quartet. And Steve has won awards and critical acclaim wherever he's gone. And recently, he's been bringing the joy of music to the autism community. So we're delighted to welcome him today. Thank, thank you, Camille. I'm really happy to be here. Um, I love Ascend. and. And you and I have, have been friends for a long time, and um, it's uh, I've watched the show, and I'm I'm a fan, so it's, it's a real pleasure to be here. How did you get in? How did you get involved in the autism community? Oh, thanks, Will, and just um, just I gotta say, go Niners because you know I'm superstitious about that, um, and I certainly will be watching the game. Um, it's uh, how did I get involved with the um, with autism, well, autism found me. Um, that's based, uh, 20 years ago, I had a son born um, on the spectrum and um, <clears throat> he was uh, diagnosed when he was about three years old. And um, it's been an uh, interesting journey over the, the, the subsequent years. And, um, and, 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 and about, I guess, maybe when he was about eight or nine, um, I decided that I needed to uh, become more involved, involved in um, advocacy issues for kids like my son and others uh, on the spectrum. And what does that mean? That means kind of participating in a nonprofit board, um, getting involved in letter writing, getting involved in creating what I think is the, you know, one thing we can do is creating events for our population, our folks on the spectrum. And so um, it, that, that's, that's kind of how I became active in autism society uh, here in the Bay Area. Um, I'm also on a number of other boards and uh, that are uh, uh, DD related, development disabled related. And um, it's been a real, you know, a good ride. Um, sometimes it's frustrating. Sometimes I feel like I don't have enough time to do what really needs to be done for these groups. Um, but then sometimes I see a little bit of a, a personal reward when I see some good come out of it. You know what I mean? Can you tell us about your work in the autism community? Thank you, Will. Um, with, with the Autism Society San Francisco Bay Area, I'm now president, which uh, was elected in uh, in uh, January beginning January one, um, the organization was started many many years ago. Um, actually, the Autism Society itself, the national group, was started um, after a man named uh, whose last name was Rimland uh, decided that he need we needed more families to get together to try to make life a better place for families and for people on the spectrum. And um, then little groups started sprouting out across the country. He wasn't from the Bay Area, to my knowledge. 
And uh, many years ago, San Francisco Bay Area started one. Principally, you know, um, the, the activities are to provide um, resources on the website for folks who may have questions, uh, folks who may be, for example, looking for um, whether or not they should engage a lawyer for certain issues, um, looking for ways to diagnose, um, looking obviously the big issue that we're all aware of is, is uh, housing and services for our population. So folks are need, looking on our site to try to find ways that they may be able to find a home or to get more support and services. Um, the other thing, you know, there's also an what we call information request line. So sometimes people call up and they have a predicament and they need some advice, you know, like a mom might call up and say, I'm having trouble getting my kid to go to the dentist and sit in the chair. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's tough. So we might be give some advice on how that might work or find an appropriate dentist. Um, the other thing that is really important are creating events. And, you know, like you can have, you know, certainly people are free to go to what we call typical events. Like if, William, if you want to spend $250 and go to Davies Symphony Hall and watch a concert there, you can do it. Uh, sometimes families uh, or sometimes people want to do events just with each other, right? Like um, families that have kids who uh, may not may have, uh, you know, behaviors that can't bring can't allow the kid to go to Davies, like jumping up and down when they get excited by a loud chord or something like that. Um, we like creating events that where everybody's safe to come and enjoy music together uh, and not have to worry about, you know, what other people might say or think or whatever, you know. We also do like hikes is real or is really great. Fan, you know, people going on hikes together where we feel safe and you know that old saying. You know, we feel safe in numbers. Um, if, if, if you could give me a thumbs up if anybody's heard of that one before, it's safe in numbers, so that you know, um, myself and my son maybe you know maybe like you will or, or somebody and buddies and maybe Camilla wants to come in. Anyway, we can come together as a group and enjoy nature and enjoy a good hike together. It's not too strenuous. I don't like strenuous hikes. I like easy hikes. Um, sometimes we, we get orchestras and ballet companies to let us come in for their dress rehearsal. So we get like a private show just for our community, which is really wonderful. Um, we also have some support groups. So sometimes moms want to get together and talk about the challenges they're facing. I'd really like to see more of that happen for diff the different segments of our population, um, like, a, like a social hour for people on the spectrum that could get together in person, hopefully someday. Um, I'd love to see a, a some kind of facilitated way that people could meet for dating, you know, um, how that might, what that might work on. Anyway, that's, um, then finally, we are active in the Autism Society in what we call na uh, national and statewide advocacy on issues that are important to us. Um, the biggest issue is just, is getting Sacramento, getting our governor to, um, push for more funding for supports and services. You know what I mean by supports and services, you know, uh, get the state to pay for what's really, really needed across the board. And of course, subsidized homes. Um, I think all, all of us eventually, all of us eventually want to feel free and independent. And a big part of that is moving out of the house, getting away from parents for a little bit, you know, be on our own. Um, but unfortunately, that's really expensive. So we need the state to jump in here and and help pay for pay for uh, rent or a house. Anyway, that's a long winded answer. Thanks for listening, everybody. Going forward, uh, our book correspondent, uh, Jennifer Brooks, uh, has a few questions for our guest. If you're a long term viewer, you may remember that previously I reviewed a book called 
This is Your Brain on Music by Daniel J. Levitin. And in this book, the author makes a comment that people with autism are, quote, not very musical. He does not define what he means by that term. He goes on to give the example of Temple Grandin, who says that she's tone deaf and that when she listens to music, it sounds like nails on a chalkboard to her. So, Steve, what do you think of that? Yeah, um, well, you know, you know uh, that's, um, that I, I don't, I'm trying to think about where to start with that. Um, the, fir the first thing is I, I would say that I, um, if he's gonna make kind of a, you know, broad statement that all people who are on the spectrum are, you know, are not musical or, you know, uh, don't appreciate music or are ab unable to create music or something like that. I'd, st I'd strongly disagree. I mean, that's just, you know, all you have to do is take him to some of our talent presentations to our shows, um, you know, uh, listen to uh, that, you know, that, 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 that kid on America's Got Talent, um, you know, a while back, uh, or, you know, I just met, I just introduced him to some friends, you know, Craig Browning out in the East Bay one of the greatest jazz players I know, you know, I sh maybe I shouldn't say his name, sorry. But if, if you, you know, I don't think he'd mind, but cause I'm, you know, I think highly of him, but he's, 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 you know, definitely on the spectrum and he knows it and he embraces it. And, uh, but he's super talented in music. I think, you know, one he's the, the guy just needs maybe a, and I don't, I don't want to put him down. I really don't. I don't like doing that for anybody, but I would suggest, I would ask him uh, first off to for him to give me his definition of what music is, and then um, his definition if he if if he says uh, a definition of talent. What is talent? Really clearly defined talent definition. Um, uh, and and then I would I would uh, you know kind of point to him. You know one thing that he may be insinuating is that there's a certain subset of our population i don't notice it in you all um and and i and and i haven't experienced this but personally but i do know for myself that there's an aspect of of his um limited speech is in monotone right we call it uh, prosody right he has a hard time inflecting within a statement so it might sound like something like I don't want to go in the car, something like that. And it's monotone. And the author may be kind of equating that way of speech with, um, in his, my son's subset with first off all people on the spectrum, number one, number two, then since they speak in, uh, you know, uh, in a, in a same pitch pattern throughout a, sentence without any rise and fall of speech right without doing that therefore he's not musical that is kind of a um, an argument i would put holes into big time because um and i so i'm just i'm just pre um guessing that that may have something to do with with that with that with that statement but it's bottom line it's not true bottom line I, in, the, on my, in my experience, that's, you know, um, in, anyway, and he, and he would have to also, he would have to come to a, a really clear definition of what autism is for us to continue a com conversation. Will, I understand you have a follow-up question for our guest. What are your favorite songs you've written for TV and the stage? Thank you, Will. I love, you know, um, I I uh, I love the musical theaters. Uh, I mean, uh, I love that music, and I've just done a little bit of it. Um, I write a lot for uh, silent movies, the old silent movies from the 1920s, Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton, and uh, also I've noticed that um, for a lot of our our families, um, you know, uh, uh, autistic folks act, uh, do actually enjoy, you know really can connect with a silent movie where the story is told through action 
and behavior on screen, smiles and so on, sometimes in what we call title cards, which give a little bit of story, you know, uh, um, that you, you read real quickly, but there's no talking, right? I kind of, I really like that. I can really engage with that and a lot of our folks do. So what I put, do is write the music behind it. So we call this underscore music so that if I'm, uh, if the guy on the movie is like writing a letter or something, a love letter, then on the piano, I'm playing some kind of beautiful slow piano music behind it, underneath, so that you hear the music, but you're actually watching the movie. That's what film scoring is primarily about. It's to complement what you see visually, to enhance what you see visually. You know, uh, in Star Wars, in the big fight scenes, you'll hear the orchestra. <laughs> And so on video games too, man, that's, that's what it's about. Video game music is complementing or enhancing the action through music underneath it. I love it. Um, so I did a, a little bit of uh, just some commercial music, uh, you know, but most of the time I gotta say, when you write, write something for a movie, little cue in a movie or a TV commercial or something like that, it kind of comes and goes and I don't really, think about it too much once it's done. But um, the other stuff like the silent film scores and uh, some of the concert music or the songs I've written, I, I still think about and I keep, keep them fresh and alive. Thank you very much again, Will and Steve. So for our final question, back to you, Camilla. Well, I think we could go on all day, but Steve, I'm very curious to know what your plans for the future are and what projects do you look you're looking forward to working on? Oh, thanks. Well, the uh, per, for my 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 for my personal life, the big big plan is to is to uh, try to uh, buy a house for my son. So that's a big deal, and I think we're going to be moving to Santa Cruz. So um, the re the reason is I want him to be able to experience living independently from dad and mom. Um, also, I'm not going to live forever, you know, uh, I'm 61 years old right now, so it's, uh, you know, I, I don't know how many more years I have on this planet, but he's going to live longer than me, um, um, I hope, and uh, he's so, he, and, and so it's, it, he needs to learn how to live on his own without uh, his parents around. That's a big deal. So that's a personal thing. Um, for professionally, I've, I've got a lot, uh, always, you know, a lot of work in the pipeline. I've got um, a new film score to write. I've got uh, a new commission for festival in New Mexico, some new arrangements. I do a lot of arranging for a string quartet of Duke Ellington's music. Um, also have to practice the piano every day. So I love doing that. Um, and then finally, with the, the advocacy work with the Autism Society and so on, I want the organization to be financially very healthy. Um, I want to uh, have the organization produce more events in the Bay Area for our community, being concerts, uh, to, uh, uh, walking tours, hikes, swims, uh, social gatherings, parties with DJ, that kind of thing. Um, and, 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 then, um, and then also continue um, the ongoing work with the uh, leaders in Sacramento and DC, our leaders, to try to get them to know more about our our group um, and um, and and what's 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 needed. So and uh, um, anyway, that's it. Thank you all so much. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you again, uh, Stephen Prunson. We look forward to hearing many more. Literally hearing many more great things from you. Yes. And uh, going from there, uh, we'll now transition over to our book correspondent, Jennifer Burks. In a previous episode of the show, I reviewed This Is Your Brain on Music by Daniel J. Levitin. And to prepare for today's show, I tried, but unfortunately failed, to find a good book to review specifically about the subject of autism and music and how they relate to each other, and one that refutes. Daniel Levitin's idea that people with autism are not very musical, whatever that may mean, based on the experience of one person, Temple Grandin, 
with all due respect, I have a master's degree in statistics. You can't make statistically meaningful conclusions on a sample size of one, even if the one is Temple Grandin. So the first book that I read for today's show is titled Perfect Pitch in the Key of Autism. It's by two piano teachers. One is named Penny Kupferstein. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The other is named Susan Ranser, who developed what she calls the Ranser method for teaching piano playing to children with autism. I'm sure they have noble intentions. Unfortunately, this book is such a badly written mess that I can't recommend it. It can't seem to decide whether it's about perfect pitch, it's about autism, it's about how to teach piano playing to children who aren't neurotypical. It tries to be all of those things, it doesn't succeed in any of them. So then I turned to another book titled Child Autism and Music Therapy. This is by an author named Rebecca Rutherford. So I give her an A for effort, an F for spelling and grammar. This book is riddled with errors. It seems like nobody bothered to edit this before it was published. And A minus for part one of the book, which gives a very concise and actually quite good summary of the history of ideas and scientific research into autism. And then the second half of part one summarizes the present state of neurological knowledge about autism as of 2020, when this book was published. I have to give a C for her discussion of music therapy. Part two is what I believe is an overly long and tangential definition of what music therapy is. Part three is supposed to be about how music therapy is applied to people with autism. Unfortunately, I did not find either part two or part three to be very well written at all. I can't really figure out what they're trying to say other than, yeah, music therapy could be a good idea for kids with autism, maybe even adults with autism. Now, uh, for our final segment, uh, we'll turn it over to our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy. Hello. So today, uh, what I will share with you is um, Ascend uh, Us is going to, um, there's going to be a meeting Saturday, um, February 5th uh, on Zoom, uh, starting at 10 a.m. and a, an online um, exception something about exceptional minds preparing for careers in animation. And um, what is the guy's name? David Segal or Segal will be the presenter and um, no registration necessary, but yeah, he's got some background. He's like a Disney veteran and he, um, uh, an advisor for the media companies. And so, um, what he will bring to the table or is going to is um, um, is about, an yeah, a future uh, in animations for those who are interested, um, especially those on the spectrum. And so that, again, that's happening uh, Saturday, February 5th. You can go to the Ascend website itself and, and it'll be there too. Thank you very much, Stacy. Uh, really good to hear from you, as always. And uh, for everyone, this is our show for this week. Uh, I want to thank our great guest, uh, Stephen Brutzman. Uh, until next time, I'm uh, Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Camilla Bixler. I'm Jennifer Brooks. I'm Stacey Kennedy. I'm Stephen Brutzman. And we're Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. Until next time, everyone, stay well and stay happy. Thank you.